folks, Mundane Man here again, and I bought myself a little bit of a present the other day from Home Depot. I bought myself the Generac 2900 PSI 2.4 gallon per minute uh, gas powered pressure washer, and uh, I'm just going to take you through the uh, process of setting it up and uh, some of the, the features that I like and maybe some of the things I dislike about this particular unit. Okay, so here's a close-up of the unit. Comes with the 196 cc engine. Um, I'm not sure what that is in uh, giddy up and go power, but it's powerful enough to generate 2900 psi. It this one came with a soap dispenser. Uh, there is your fuel on and off, and choke. I find this one to start it. You need to put the choke on most of the time, even if it's warmed up. It's got a fairly sizable fuel tank on it. And around back here, there is the pump itself. And it has the, um, where you can put the siphon hose on to automatically uh, do soap dispensing. This is where your hose connects. And that's where the pressure hose connects. Over here is the, the handle and it comes with a place to put all the various nozzles that came with it. So this one came with a, a general purpose nozzle. Uh, this one is a straight on nozzle for what they call stubborn stain. So it's a very uh, straight stream that uh, I guess would give you the full 2900 PSI. Uh, this is the light duty uh, nozzle and that's probably the one that you would maybe use on your car or boat or something like that unless you got heavy sediment on it and then you would probably use the green the green uh, general purpose one and this is the soap dispenser style uh, nozzle uh, this is the uh, rod that goes into the gun handle this is the gun handle here with the trigger mechanism and then it comes with a dial where you can select the various different types of devices you might be using. This would be your normal pressure washer uh, application here. This one might be if you have a high pressure uh, broom, which is an option I'm thinking about getting. This next one is if you're doing the uh, straight on high pressure nozzle uh, stream to get rid of stubborn stains. You gotta be careful of that one, that'll peel paint off. So. Maybe if you're doing a fence or something and want to strip the paint off, that would be a good one to use. And this location over here is for doing soap dispensing right out of the, uh, the tank or whatever you stick the siphon hose in. It also came with another soap dispensing nozzle. This one just has a broader uh, mouth on it, uh, does, a, does a wider spray. And another high pressure nozzle that does that uh, straight stream for stubborn uh, stains or whatever you're trying to get off and it comes with 30 feet of pressure hose and also the siphon hose that allows you to draw out of the onboard uh, soap dispenser or you can stick that into whatever type of bottle of uh, soap that you may want to use on whatever application and it comes with a filter on the end of it to help filter out any uh, any crap before it goes into the uh, the pump. So basically it came as assembled as this. So very minimal assembly required. Don't even think I used any tools to put it together. One thing I did do already was install the uh, the wand handle holder here and on the back side there's a little uh, hose hanger for your high pressure hose. And all those took there are a couple plastic uh, nuts that just push in and this is just a, a squeeze on squeeze off type of uh, device so again no tools required okay the first thing I'm going to do is put the handle on and it just slips over top of the bars that are already there it has these spring-loaded uh, latches that you push in boom handles on Step two, let's put the high pressure hose on. Let's just hang that in our handy dandy little hose hanger. And then you just take your pressure hose and it goes on the spigot right here. 
There's a little O-ring in there that seals it, so you just have to kind of wiggle it into the pump, like such. And then start threading it on. It's got a nice easy handle to thread it in. Make sure your hose is in all the way. Next step, we'll put the nozzle on. And then you just take the other end of your hose, and it's also got the same type of end on it with an O-ring on it. Push it into your handle and thread on the coupler there. Doesn't have to be hugely tight, but make sure that O-ring is nicely, nicely seated in here. And we can hang that like that. Okay, this is the lance that goes into the nozzle. And it's got a quick connect on the end of it for adding your different nozzles real quickly. And it's got a threaded brass end and it just screws into the end of your nozzle. Again, all very easy to assemble. And I just keep it finger tight. I've yet to find that you need to do anything harder than that. Now let's see how it stays in our wand handle there. Not bad. So there it is, mostly assembled. Like I said, really easy to put together. Last but not least, our siphon hose. So the, the end with the uh, filter on it goes inside of your tank. But it also, and there's a punched out hole there, but it also goes into eh, a bottle of your favorite soap that you like to use for whatever tasks. And you just route this hose around and you connect it. Let's see if I can get a good view here. Connected on top of this uh, siphon spigot and it just presses on and ultimately you don't need to have that siphon hose on all the time if you're just uh, doing pressure washing without any soap. And that my friends is that. It's nice that the uh, plastic panel comes with you know rubber grommets that you can stick the nozzles in that way you know always know where they are. I have a tendency to set something down and then I can never find it again. Now the last thing you have to do is put gas and oil in it. It comes without oil in the crankcase, so they do actually send oil with it. It comes with a 16 fluid ounce or 473 milliliter bag of oil. And it also comes with two places that you can add the oil and check the oil. So there's one on this side and of course one on the other side. Now, I found that this one was the easiest to get at, so it took pretty much this whole bag of oil. So when you're putting the oil in, just make sure the unit is on a flat surface. Right now I have it tilted back a bit, and pulling out the uh, dipstick causes the oil to drip out a bit. One thing I didn't mention either, it has an on-off switch, so you turn it on position, to uh, get it started pulling the ripcord or when you want to shut it off you just turn it to the off position and that kills it. Like I said before you have your fuel on and off valve here and your choke and again when it's cold especially but I found even when it's been used you still have to put the choke on partially or completely to get it to fire up. And Make sure you put some uh, regular unleaded gas in it and it's ready to go. Now before you use it, make sure you connect your water hose before you start it. Um, I believe that's probably just best for the pump. And your water hose just connects to this coupling here. Again, nice big and easy knobs to uh, thread your hoses into, makes it uh, easy to connect and disconnect. Okay, it already filled it with gas earlier, so I've used it probably for, I would say, four hours. And it's got a nice screen in there. Make sure that uh, no sediment or debris gets inside your gas tank. But I do like the size of the gas tank. Um, it holds enough fuel that you can probably run it for two or three hours without having to fill it up again.
Okay, well, let's start it up quickly. Just watch your ears because it is relatively loud. So, choke on. Turn the fuel on by pushing that lever to the right. Take it off of, uh, or sorry, put it into on mode, which is a straight down line, and give her a pull. So we'll get to using it in a minute. Some of the things uh, I really like about this unit is the size of the fuel tank. So from an operation perspective, you're not always stopping what you're doing to fill up with fuel. I like the fact that they give you a variety of nozzles, plus the other two that are in a, a bag that come with it. Um, the handle, the trigger mechanism is nice and easy on your hand. Um, I think you can lock it in place too. And the different selections as well on the nozzle for the different pressures or the different types of devices that you might use. A couple of pet peeves I have with this unit, which really aren't much, is they probably could have provided a, a longer lance with it so uh, you don't have to kind of stoop over when you're doing close contact with whatever surface that you're cleaning. Um, the pressure hose, I think could have been maybe a little bit better or higher duty and maybe even a little bit longer. This is a 30 foot one. I think they could have maybe made it a little bit bigger, but um, might have made it a little bit cumbersome to move the device around. Uh, and that's about it. I do like the large wheels on it. It does roll around nicely. And I also like the fact that it has the soap dispenser on it, even though you don't need to use the soap dispenser. As long as you have the siphon hose, you can put that hose into a bottle of uh, detergent or whatever cleaner you want to use. A couple things you should note about this unit, as it is a residential unit, it's generally not meant for commercial use, is uh, the use of high temperature water above 100 degrees Fahrenheit and that's about, about 38 degrees Celsius is not recommended for this and I'm not sure if it's a limitation in the pump or the hose so yeah make sure you're not running hot water through it and um, based on the size of the pump too, they don't allow a longer than 50 foot of hose. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're buying added accessories. I think a couple accessories that I might purchase from aftermarket, whether it's through uh, Generac or um, any other supplier, is maybe a longer lance. And um, also I think that high pressure uh, sweeper for doing cement would be a nice option as well. The nozzle has a setting for that and it's good for scrubbing cement driveways and, and garage pads and that type of thing. So I think I'm going to uh, invest in that. So why don't I show you this unit in operation. Okay I'm going to start out with the white nozzle which is the kind of light duty use. Probably the preferred one you want to use when uh, working on a car. So I'm just going to slip in the quick connect and make sure it's in there good. You'll hear the click of the uh, brass coupling and then you can turn this to point the spray nozzle the way you want the stream to come out. Okay the water's on let's fire it up and start spraying. Okay, so I put some general purpose cleaner in my container, which is good for cars and both washing your siding and such. So now I'm gonna switch out this nozzle to either one of these uh, soap nozzles. I'm gonna try the little black one first and see what kind of spray we get out of that. If not, if it's not good enough, I'll move to the bigger one. Turn your dial to the soap mode there, and we'll fire it up and start spraying soap on.
One thing I really like about this unit with that siphon tube, you can use other types of uh, liquids. So for you people uh, that are into cars and making sure you have a spot free rinse or if you're cleaning windows with your uh, unit, you can dump the siphon tube in a bottle of distilled water and use the soap function, rinse everything off with it. And now you've got basically a spot free rinse. So that was my uh, quick review and assembly and operation of this Generac 2900 PSI 2.4 gallon per minute unit. The reason I chose it was I wanted a fairly high pressure at 2900 PSI. It's pretty much good enough for what I'm going to be doing. And the flow rate of 2.4 gallons a minute, which is maximum, uh, is, um, I wanted sufficient water flow to make sure that uh, the job was getting done right. So overall, very happy with the unit, operates great, comes with enough uh, individual nozzles to suit any need, and uh, overall, very happy with it. So if you like this kind of video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and that is it for now. Bye-bye.